Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And on this episode, as we very rapidly approach the end of Delve as you know it. The end uh, of all things. It's the end of the Delve as you know it. We had the idea to talk about how to end campaigns. Because, you know, we actually have never really talked... Well, actually, we never really talked about starting campaigns in the first place. But but um, I kind of had the idea that maybe it would be a good idea to actually talk about the ending of campaigns. Since it kind of feels like we're doing the very same thing on this show. We're ending our whole campaign on the show. We're ending this campaign. And then we're starting with new characters on, 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 a, brand new, on a brand new thing. Have you ever actually seen the end of an RPG campaign? Oh gosh, in? that I was in, not not one that I was running. Well, I th I th okay. So <laughs> maybe this is my personal feeling, but if you're running it, I still consider you to be in it. Okay, I guess that's fair. Um, I don't think I've seen like I don't think I've ever properly finished a campaign I was in. I was wondering about that because you've been playing for a lot longer than I have and have played a lot more games than I have. But I don't I, think any has ever properly been ended. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I feel like that's a very common thing. Like, there are, there are famous campaigns, like the ones that are done for, like, live plays and for streams and stuff that have endings... Obviously, in Critical Role, the ending of that campaign was a, was a whole thing on, like, Adventure Zone. I, I listened to, you know, that first campaign, and they had a, a whole long ending to those where they try to wrap everything up. But I, I'm trying to figure out, like, in typical home play, how many times do, like, an extended campaign that goes beyond, like, two, three sessions... Yeah. ...that you're going to be playing a long time, how many of those actually have, like, an ending oh it depends how long you play them for nathan that's true but like let's say um the kind of games that go on for a few years do they uh, d d is there a point where everyone's kind of like okay now now's the point where we end the campaign and what is that you know yeah i, I... ending them is hard people don't like closure the the thing that's ironic for me though is that if you are going to develop a character and that character is you, that you've you've taken that character you've embodied that character or you've built this world if you're running and you've done that for such a long time um as Tony Stark said um part of the story is the end yeah but that's the worst part of the story apparently <laughs> But in some ways, it's the most necessary one, because it doesn't, until you get to the ending of the story, you don't really know what the character arcs truly manifest themselves as. Uh, I guess, yeah. You, you, but you know what I mean, it's like, you know, you can take a character over, over a long arc, but if you don't really see how the ending of that resolves, you don't know if the characters learned their lesson, where they ended up going... Um, what what the resolution to anything actually was for for the future? You don't know how this caps off their storyline. They don't learn anything, Nathan. They're characters. They they don't they don't know anything. They don't learn anything. They just exist in their bubbles. Well, <laughs> that's a terrible character. It's you the worst character. You don't want those kinds of characters. I I truly like. I feel like when I'm playing games, though, like, my characters, they, they just, like, uh, meander through the world and just just don't actually have any character development. But that's just kind of the way I like to play games anyway. But I feel like if you're trying to have any kind of a deeper campaign than that, you want to actually, you know, experience 
change in your characters and see that they go places and they do things and they they evolve in some way. And if you're not actually ending the campaign at any time, then that's just kind of like an open-ended question that never gets answered. So I know, like, we didn't have a real... I don't think we had a real proper ending to my campaign with David and Bo. Right. But... The way that we had played, the characters definitely grew and had stuff that they learned. Um, and their characters did have development in their aspects. And the way that was going at the end of it, like, I know where my character was going. It's just, we I don't think we ever properly finished it. Yeah. Um, so there wasn't, like, an end. There was a, a kind of an end to the main story we had originally. Like, the big, we, com- we beat the big bad. Mm-hmm. you know the big bad guy and so everything after that was like what well, came after that so i guess you could call that the end of that story but we never quite finished off the rest of their adventures right right same thing happened with me with the circle stone saga with dom rembrandt last we left him was in a technicolor hell plane of existence yeah, I, I don't really feel like that was resolution. <laughs> that feels like it definitely was It's wasn't. a sort of resolution. It's an ending if you leave it there. Uh, Well, considering he probably didn't have a real notable way out of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that probably... <laughs> but but the, the other part of it was that at the end of that session, uh, the crew had basically... Uh, said that their next goal in very much search for Spock fashion is to try and figure out how to get to me and get me out of there. But then we didn't have another session. Yeah. So So I guess the real question becomes then, do you determine the ending based on the end of the actual story, like the altogether end where you want it to end, where it feels like a finale? Or do you determine the ending based on where the story ideally could have ended? If we were to take it to a realm of something like, uh, we'll we'll take it to a video game or something like a, a Skyrim, you know, there's obviously situations there where you're having character development, but your your character never actually. There's no actual end to the game. And so I I guess there are cases to be made for (laughs) open-endedness. But I think, too, the point that you're making, um, I don't know if I necessarily need my character to wind up in an ideal scenario at the end. Like, I I can kind of come to peace with the idea that maybe Rembrandt's just in that hellscape forever. Like, that's just where the story ends. It doesn't feel like the kind of resolution that you hope for. And yeah. w- when, when I say resolution, too, I don't mean what a lot of people think means is that and everybody lived happily ever after. I, I, I don't actually expect everyone to live happily ever after, but I do kind of expect that like the, the journey that you were on wraps up in some way. Yeah, it's nice to have the story come to a conclusion. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be happy. Uh, no, and a lot of times it legitimately isn't. It's, it, like, for instance, and I think we might be able to talk a little bit better about it from this perspective, what if you were talking about uh, one-shots or short campaigns? Yeah. We've ended those. Those those are self-contained stories, more so. Exactly. I don't know about your personal experiences, but in the couple times where I have done that, uh, it is a premium to see those end well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Usually they end pretty abruptly, and you're lucky if your character is alive at the end of it. I mean, kinda, yeah. Those are also terrific because it also means that you're... If you haven't invested as much time in those characters, uh, they're kind of expendable anyway. <laughs> uh, in a way that, like a long-term character, you might not care about uh, as much. But when uh, when I did my, whatever it was, my honey heist, that mission, 
Um, my character lived through it, but I can tell you that if I were going the same way that I was going and making the bold decisions that I was making for a longer campaign, I don't think he would have. He would only be able to live in that one campaign, pulling off that one heist. It is not a winning strategy the way I was playing him for the long term. Yeah. It would have been a very different thing if I was trying to play him for, um, you know, a very long session where he was going through multiple uh, things. Because, honestly, he would not have lasted <laughs> in that scenario. Similarly, like when I was doing the one-shots with DC, uh, you know, Percy... I like playing Percy in different things because he's good for one-shots. I don't need to worry about character development with him. I kind of assume that he'll probably be able to last through a campaign because he's at least formidable enough to do so. But if he dies, I can just chalk it up to, well, that was him in this scenario. And, you know, he'll he'll be in a different one in a different capacity next time. Um, but then again, I'm not really building character arcs and I, I, I will ask you about this at this point, but my personal feeling is that when you're doing those kinds of one-shot, two-session, three-session games, character development isn't a high priority there. In one-shots, not really. Um, there's not necessarily a whole lot you can do in a one-shot for character development. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the type of story being told right? and like what is going on. Because generally... A one-shot would have kind of one arc to it, I think. So it'd either be like to roleplay, or it'd be a very combat-heavy one, or it, it wouldn't necessarily go through a lot of ups and downs and the high points, low points, high points. It would kind of just be a one-and-done, as it were, since it's a um, one-shot. One-shot, yeah. No, you don't usually see a lot of B-stories. <laughs> In one shot, there's not a lot of time to actually develop those or to go through other threads. You have to pretty much be on the railroad track headed headed toward your destination. Um, but now, if I think back to the one that I know that you did, uh, Tales of the Mirror Stone. Yeah. When, when you did that, I mean, obviously those characters, you weren't going to worry too much about their character development, but in terms of what it meant for the overall story in your main campaign, it kind of tied back into that, right? That The, the one-shot was the B story there. Interesting. Okay, so you used the one-shot for the B story because your A story was your main campaign. Yeah, so the A story was our normal campaign, and then it was like, hey, I want to do this thing, let's do a one-shot of it. Make a couple, I think it was 12th level characters or something like that. Mm. Um, and this is kind of like what you're going to be doing. Mm. So make characters that are specialized for this. So so it was going from the main campaign with a bard and druid to going to the, the side mission here with different characters, different arc. That kind of like helped out stuff going on in the main campaign because it was an infiltration and assassination mission that we were on. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially. And so it was like, yeah, this will influence that because your events here are things your other characters aren't going to know about, but they're going to influence stuff going on in that world. So that's an interesting way to look at it, too, is that if you can have a smaller story and you can wrap it up, but it actually relates to something larger, you've, you've uh, still tied it into something that's more meaningful in, in the end. But now we have a few actual questions. Now that we've kind of assumed that we don't really know how campaigns end ourselves... Because <laughs> when we say, like, how, how do you end campaigns, we don't have a lot of personal experience to draw from on that. Uh, we, you don't we, end them on cliffhangers. We don't end them on cliffhangers. Well, unfortunately, they kind of do end up on cliffhangers. But in that vein, I wanted to talk a little bit about why do campaigns end? I think that a lot of times campaigns end mostly because of scheduling. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, usually it's because someone can't play anymore. <laughs> People can't play anymore. Life gets in the way of games. I don't know a lot of gaming groups where if they were able to meet on a regular basis and everything was fine and there was no problems associated with it, where they would go, yeah, but you know what, I still think that we're coming to a natural end point in our campaign. And we shall stop now. That's a that's that's a rare thing if you're planning on playing with the same group continually. 
I think here's the thing too. If you're playing with the same group consistently, it's usually because you're at a place in life where you are uh, either content or settled into a location. And so big changes in life, not just location, also interrupts, you know, gaming because gaming is not. <laughs> Sorry, gaming is not the most important thing here. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> um, let's say college students yeah. usually have a good time because they're in the same location for a long period. They have got they're very routine in what they're doing in life. Sure. Uh, allegedly, uh, and anyone who's gaming is probably pretty <laughs> routine. Um, so I assume you have the same group people for multiple years in the same location. You all kind of had the same schedule-ish unless you have work and stuff because classes are kind of all around the same time slots. Right. So it's like, I feel like that is easier to schedule around. Or if you have a 9-to-5 job and everyone else around you has a 9-to-5 job, that's easier because you could do, hey, you work 9-to-5 Monday to Friday, you have weekends off, let's do a Friday night gaming session every week. With either some of your coworkers or people that just live around you, that I think is easy as well. It gets a little harder once you start having weird schedules and locations and families. Yeah, those things. Not that families are the weird things. <laughs> well, well, like for me, I haven't played ours. a game in like yeah. at least I probably haven't played a game in three years. You don't quite have as much consistency with the amount of people around you holding the same schedules. No, my schedule I work 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Right. Sunday night until Friday morning. So in my right. schedule, I have my Friday during the day and night and then Saturday day and night off. But on my Friday evening, Saturday and into Sunday, I've got my kid. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I've got a 10 year old. So right. could I potentially get a 10 year old into playing D&D &D with me? Or another game with me? Maybe he likes his Switch. <laughs> he likes his Switch. Well, he likes his no. Switch. Um, fair enough. But, like, yeah. for me, my schedule is really strange, so trying to get anyone who would want to play, like, during the daytime, when I'm not tired, even just trying to record episodes of the show can be a pain in the ass, because my schedule is so weird. Sometimes campaigns will end because um, the the funding is not there anymore if you happen to be doing a live play series for a company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's also that possibility. Although, to my credit, I did kind of end that. It was abrupt, but I, I felt like it was necessary, even though it was only like six episodes that I come up with some kind of resolution for the characters. And it wasn't the the way I would have preferred it be. Uh, like, I wanted those to be, like, longer arcs probably for, like, a year or two before I could end them. But I did want to at least come to some kind of resolution for the characters. Because it, it, if you're doing, like, a... If you're doing a stream or a live play or anything like that, you're not just invested in the, you know crew that you have, but also anybody else who's following the storyline. And I know something that's always bothersome to me is like when you're watching a television series you really like, and then they decide to cancel it a season before it was actually like supposed to end or something like that. And so they never actually give you an ending to the storyline and it just kind of like hangs there forever in your mind. I was like, okay, but I can, I can actually produce something of a resolution here for these characters and I'm going to do that because I don't want people that have listened to the few episodes that we've done to to have that going on <laughs> like to at least give them something. Right. And so there's a difference too there. If you're playing it for a live stream or an actual play or whatever, if you're doing a, it for episodes for content as well, you have to realize that it's not only just your players that you're going to be disappointing potentially if you don't finish and wrap things up properly. Yeah. It's going to be anyone else that's watching or listening to it. But if your players aren't having fun and don't want to do it anymore, then you're not going to do it. So you have to explain to the people that were listening, you know, that, hey, the players just weren't into it. Yeah. And it it is. It's performative. So there is a difference. Uh, but then I feel like you should, if you're doing that, you should be beholden to get your players together and go, hey, we had this commitment to do this. Let's just try and finish this up in one or two more sessions, and then we can do something else or whatever. 
I feel like that would be a good way to end it if you're doing it for a, a stream or anything like that. Yeah, and and that's essentially what I had to try to do. I do have to say, like, Critical Role is actually one of those cases where when they did Campaign 1, um, you know, they were really under no obligation to end that campaign and start something new at the time that they were doing it. I mean, they had plenty of people watching, and they could have just kept that campaign and those characters going for forever. Um, but like, as the story goes from what I understand is that Matt Mercer had just kind of said, you know, I think the campaign's going to be ending in like, you know, this many episodes because we've kind of explored the characters as far as they like the, the arcs are naturally coming to closes. And so it seems like a good time to you know, conclude the storyline. And may- maybe that's just, uh, in-, in some ways, I'm sure that's up to preference for the GM um, th- or whoever happens to be running it where they feel like there's a natural end point. But you don't usually see people take that. They want to just keep playing the same th- the same campaign as long as they possibly can. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kudos to him i actually respect that that he was like yeah no i understand we have a super popular stream worth of a very large devoted fan base but the other thing is is that this is really where the story feels like it needs to end <laughs> yeah. we'll start a new thing but this well, is where this story has to on end. that note too with um my campaign with Bo and david it actually Bo had retired his character at one point he went to go off and do something else separate from the party into the Feywild to look mm. for, I think, to look for his dad, uh, as it sure. were. So he went off to do something else and introduce a new character. And in the meantime, so so that character's kind of arc kind of progressed to where that's what he felt this character would should be doing. And I think he also kind of wanted to bring in a new character, so he did. But that influenced my character greatly. Because he had grown closer to that character, like, as a brother kind of deal. Mm-hmm. And so had learned a lot about, you know, civilized society, as it were, from that sure. character. Uh, and as a Dragonborn druid, he really wasn't very sure. So after Bo's character left, I kind of was like, well, if he's leaving, but we're still in the same campaign, my character yeah. is very conflicted about this. Not the mm-hmm. not the campaign side, but like I'm in character, my character was just kind of you know he's a lycanthrope and a druid, and not used to society, and he was kind of going down either the path he was going to become, uh, dip into barbarian, yep, to get some of that rage because he uh, we had established that he's got the feral instincts in him from the lycanthropy, sure. Oh, uh, I said that strangely, lycanthropy, <laughs> lycanthropy, look, um, it's look fine. At lycanthrops um Luke. so i was kind of talking to david i was like i'm not sure which way my character is going to go from this because he's either going to go very feral and embrace the f- you know being feral sure. and embrace the lycanthrope and embrace going down the road of barbarian i might mm-hmm. or he might stay the course that he's been on and i'm not sure what he's going to do so i'll have to see how look going forward things play out um mm-hmm. but it was just interesting because that character um, when Shump had left, it was like, oh, well, this is creating a void where that character is helping keep my character grounded. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting. Even though one character left that campaign, it affected the character that was still there. Right. That's so right. it was a natural ending for one character, but the other one was, I think, creating that course of action to end their arc in yeah. a different way. Yeah. That actually is uh something i i'd like to explore for a minute too is when it's not the gm that's ending a specific like a campaign so to speak but in some ways the 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 character themselves are ending their own personal arc and almost removing themselves from the campaign because and that can happen to a story. couple different things too mm-hmm. it can happen because of character death for instance. Sure. And, uh, same example, my character had died at one point. Mm. And Bo's character ended up bringing him back to life. 
um, mm-hmm. several days later, or seven days, several days, weeks, I don't know, some amount of time later in game that I was not present for because my character was dead. Um, and we were playing online, so that's fine. It's not like I had to be there in person. But during the time that my character was dead, um, Shump had his arc going and doing things to try and revive my character. And I had been creating a new character, not because I wanted to necessarily, but because my character legitimately died. We've, we've been over this before on the show. He died doing what he loved, which is trying to kill ancient enemies of his mm-hmm. people. Um, <laughs> you, you gotta do what you love, yeah. But he died, so I was like, alright, I guess I'll try and make a new character. And so David and I had been playing with that character on the side um, to try and get him integrated to somewhere that he could meet up with uh, Shump. Mm -hmm. And so it was at that point when I was being resurrected and David's like, either you can like answer the call to be resurrected or you can play as a character you already made. And I was like, no, no, I want to get resurrected. We'll see how this plays out. (laughs) <laughs> and so it was just interesting because I was playing the other, I was playing my uh, warlock and I was going to join the party like to do whatever as a warlock. So I did do some things as like another uh, B side kind of, not a one shot, but as a B side to try and work into that campaign. Yeah, because uh, there were uh, a couple times where I had been playing my character, but I was kind of bored with my character and I, I was like, maybe, uh, m- maybe he could go somewhere at this point there was a point where i thought to myself that had i continued on um i kind of wanted rembrandt to uh maybe when he had wrapped up uh securing circle stone from the orc army and um was surveying the damage and everything that his story was supposed to go off into like the mountains where he would um rejoin um his uh academy his his temple possibly to you know take what he's learned and and try to uh, advance in his uh, uh, skills as a monk uh and then uh in order to aid with what was happening back in circle stone uh have one of the more competent students from the temple actually go and give them aid in his stead uh and then we'd start up with a a different kind of monk altogether that was a different character that i wanted to create Uh, i thought that that was kind of a an interesting idea that also kind of lends itself to uh rembrandt having an arc where he's you know gone on this journey he's learned a lot from that journey but he realizes he's still got a lot of growing up to do because he's still a kid. And um, now he's going to go back to the temple so that he can do that maturing and gain wisdom. And he's going to send somebody who is better at this because uh, they'll, they'll be more beneficial to the, the journey going forward than he was going to be. Uh, I kind of felt like that was something I might want to do just because Rembrandt's story otherwise was pretty much just him uh, gallivanting around and being a punch turtle. That is what Rembrandt did. Yeah, Rembrandt was a punch turtle. That's what he did. Uh, And he did it. He did it well. He did it very, very well. Now the big question that we got to that we this is we're get your mind palace ready, Alex. Here we go. Um. If you had to actually end a campaign, which we have established we have never really had to do, uh, how would you do it? Obviously, rocks fall, everybody dies. Rocks fall, everybody dies, uh, there's giant pebbles, and you are all set. (laughs) You know, honestly, if I had to end a campaign, like, depending on what the campaign was, Mm -hmm. uh, either it would be a happy ending, I think, where everyone just kind of, they do the thing, and it's just like, there are a lot of those heroes, you could do that. Mm-hmm. I'm not really all for that kind of ending, personally. Mm. Tragic yeah. endings are always fun. Because, yeah. like, you won, but, like, at what cost? Right. Right. Um, bittersweet. Bittersweet. It's like, maybe you lost ending. half your party. Sure. 
maybe you all got scattered to different planes of existence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like um, the ending for Avengers. Yeah. Which I I still haven't seen, but I know that Tony dies. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert, Spoiler Tony Stark for, dies. Yeah, for the two people on Earth, Alex included, that did not see Endgame. Um, I'll get there eventually. Yeah. Um, I'm so behind on Marvel. But y- y- you could do that. Tony goes out as a hero. Yep. But Tony dies. You know, he yep. saves the universe in his death. Um, mm-hmm. You could do something like that. Not necessarily on the same grand scale, but, you know, sacrificing someone. I mean, that's always great. To tell a story, and then, like, maybe the players take a vow just to honor their memory or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or you could do super, you know, not even tr- not even poetically tragic, you just do tragic where they just don't. The thing that they're trying to stop, or the trying- thing that they're trying to do, doesn't happen the way they want it to, and just, it fucks everything up. Uh, or, even better, just the enemy wins. Yeah, essentially that. It's like, all right, well, what if you guys do the thing and you kill the guy and it's, oops, that was not the right thing you should have done. Now the world's ending. But, I I mean, I'm talking about legitimately, you get to the final boss battle, you lose, everyone dies, the big evil thing you've been trying to fight this entire time wins. But that's that's the same thing as Rock's Fall, everybody dies, except the bad guy wins. (laughs) Yeah, I think exactly. if you're gonna do that, it's he doesn't kill everyone, he maims you and then enslaves everyone or something like that. Oh well that's even better. Let's just do that. Uh then 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 you get to see the bad ending. I guess it really depends. Like if you have to cut a campaign early, for instance, I would say go with what has been going on and what they're building up to and extrapolate forward based on all the decisions they've gone through like have they been good have they been bad have they been doing the things they need to do or have they been loafing around you know mm-hmm. so if, what if there's all right the bad guy's gonna raid the city but they've been loafing around it's like mm-hmm. all right they've been loafing around though so the bad guy's gonna raid the city and he's gonna destroy half the city and so many people and like maybe he'll get caught in a crossfire unaware and yeah. brutally murdered. Whatever. Over maybe they'll be overrun. Like the the final game will be a raid and they can't survive it. Like there's no way that they're able to legitimately survive unless they run away. Mm-hmm. But we already gone over this before. Players don't really like to run away. No. Um, not as So a so maybe you're just overwhelming and it's like the battle's desperate and they go out taking as many of the enemies as they can but ultimately are overrun yeah for instance you could do something like that that would be a decent way if you had to cut it early just i would say if you have to cut it early that would be what i would do is go with the decisions and all the things they've done up to that point and kind of figure out what would make the most sense for what your arc was in uh, a lot of ways the idea of that taking out as many as you can and then but they still get through that actually sounds like 300 that's basically the. That's basically what happens with the Spartans at the at the battle. Oh yeah, because they all they all die. Yeah, they all die. The only the only thing that they were really trying to do was prevent the Persians advance for as long as they could. Yeah. Uh, so they yeah. they went into that knowing it was a suicide mission. Yeah, because they knew that they weren't going to win that. There's just no way. But you don't necessarily have to let your players know it's a suicide mission. No, you don't. You don't. But, uh, but. Yeah. Here's the butt. You don't have to let them know, but I feel like if you're cutting campaigns short, they should know about it, and you should let them know up front that you're planning on having it be a suicide mission. Right. And I would say in that case, if you don't want to sour anyone's uh, tastes on things, you could always ask them, this is the kind of ending I have planned Mm -hmm. to cut this short. Is this okay with you guys? Because then you can get people's input and be like, yeah, no, that that would be fitting, or no, that my character would hate that, I would hate that as a player. Because you want to kind of make people happy at the end. Sure. Even if it's bittersweet happiness, you want them to feel good about the outcome. Yeah, that it actually actually resonated. Um, On a, a similar token, I'm glad you were kind of mentioning, you know, 
looking back on what characters did because what I was going to suggest is to look at those like character beats to try and bring stuff back for callbacks. Um, one of the things that I was looking to do when I was, uh, when, when I had my campaign was basically just to take a few notes here and there about stuff that the characters did, um, and stuff that the characters maybe achieved and stuff that they might've picked up, stuff like that. And I realized that knowing stuff about those characters is a really good way to, when you get to the end of either, uh, you know, a storyline or a campaign, to bring that back as a narrative piece, too. Uh, so that you know, like, what their favorite flower or their favorite uh, joke is, or, like, just, uh, uh, like, you know what the name of their childhood puppy was uh, and 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 somehow some way that translates into like the name that they put onto a bar or you know a, a you know something that uh resonates based on the stuff that you did and the people that uh remember what you did their life and their profile actually did matter regardless of whether they actually live through it or not um, that the memory of them in some way lives on. I just kind of like the idea of that circular notion that even the stuff that happened at the beginning of a campaign um, has has a direct correlation to the end. Maybe just because we had talked about the hero's journey recently, but that idea of the circular, you know, kind of ending where you start in some ways, that the, that the beginning informs the end in a lot of ways i think that that's just an interesting way to tie everything together and make it feel like you've actually come to a conclusion yeah i i think that would actually be very nice and it would be a very fitting way to end a campaign there's there's a whole thing i i watched once i watched a video where they were talking about um just television series and how they end and uh, ones that did it well and ones that didn't. And something that they pointed out, and maybe this is just because of the structure of a television series, but if you end your show and some of the ones that people hated the endings of, they all had something in common. And that was, it felt like the arcs of the characters were not really paid off and that in a lot of ways it was undermined by how the story ended. In the ones that are known as some of the best endings in television history, the endings are informed by everything the characters did up to that point and end up paying off what people would have seen and like all of the, all of the things people would have noticed in their character arcs along the way, that that actually does inform the end. So that, like, the, the people's investment in that story is rewarded at the end for having had that investment. At ha Having watched, like, Game of Thrones, I understand, because I've had the same feeling, why people weren't really big on the end of Game of Thrones, because it felt like basically all of the character arcs got thrown out the window for whatever they wanted to do at the end, and didn't make any sense why any of them did what they did. Yeah, I would say for me, at least, in my way of ending campaigns, understanding that the character themselves and the person that's playing them, they, they've gone through this long arc, they've gone through this campaign, there's a lot of stuff that they've built up in the lore of their characters, and to make all of that lore count for something, and to be brought in at the end to some effect. I like it. You know, at the at the end though here, I would ask uh one other we usually kind of have a counter question toward the end and do I we think, we do. I think that's just kind of I don't know if we intend it, but we usually do have like a count <laughs> a devil's advocate question. Um is there a case that you could make for not ending a campaign? For not ending one? Yeah. <laughs> like, just, just never, never ending, ending it? Yeah, well, uh, it's okay. the never-ending well, story, but for real. 
Okay, well, one case I can see for not ending a campaign is if you intend to pick it back up later. For instance, so, again, let's use college students, for instance, as a potential for this. College students don't typically live on campus during the summer or during vacations. I would assume that you could end a campaign if, like, you're going from one year to the next, you could end a campaign. But if you're all coming back the next year... Perhaps you could say, all right, we're going to take a three-month, four-month hiatus, however long. I don't remember how long vacations are for the summer. <laughs> uh, but you, you could say, all right, over over the break, we're going to take a hiatus, and yeah. we'll get back together, like, probably not during the first couple weeks of school, mm-hmm. but, like, at the end of the, like, at the end of September, for instance, we'll pick back up. So we'll have, like, a three- to four-month break. Or you could do a time skip and say you're starting off a little bit later than you left off, for instance. And, like, Mm -hmm. that gives a good break for the GM to figure out, like, what happened in the interim, perhaps. uh, Where they're going. It'd almost be like a break between seasons of a show. Sure, sure. But do you leave it on a cliffhanger? Oh, absolutely. If you're doing that, unless you're doing a time skip, you leave it on a cliffhanger in that that, uh, context. At least when I'm watching television shows... I don't necessarily care about the cliffhanger anymore because I figure that if a show's good, it should be able to get renewed on the very basics that the show is good. And it shouldn't have to then, like, put all of the characters into a precarious situation that will only get resolved if the next season starts. I never know how to feel about that, but I do, at the same time, I fall for it myself. And, uh, like, when the cliffhanger hanging, I, I need to see what happens like as soon as the show picks up for another season to find out that yeah it resolves itself in the first episode of course it does and then we move on past that but um but i don't know as far as cliffhangers go i understand the mechanism about it i just don't know if i personally care about it yeah the cliffhangers are an interesting interesting thing to do right and that's why we are going to leave this episode on a cl- No, we're not going to do that. We're <laughs> Every episode is a cliffhanger. Every episode is a cliffhanger. <laughs> you don't know when it's going to end. Oh, no! Um, that, that being said, uh, we should probably actually end this episode. Uh, we, we, we actually do end episodes. <laughs> Once in a while, we end episodes properly, too. Yeah, it's rare, but it does occasionally happen. Normally, it's at this point, I would ask uh, you, Alex, where they could find more information about Delve on the internet, but I feel like, at this point, we probably don't want to do that, because <laughs> we're kind of late in the day for that, but uh, I guess I guess what we could say is, if you wanted to see the back catalog of everything we've done on Delve, where could they go? If you wanted to see everything we've done on Delve over the last five years of this podcast, mm-hmm. you can go to www.delvecast.com. Uh, some of that stuff will be reminiscent of things that we're going to be doing on the new show when we start that up. Uh, and uh, the Patreon is actually going to just be changing over to the new Patreon. And some of those programs are also going to be on the new network. Uh, speaking of Patreon, I want to thank our shiny little patron, Bonnie Ainsworth, and I want to thank all of our patrons over there, as well as Drunk Paul, who is our patron over on our Discord, which is also going to be a new Discord soon, <laughs> so look forward to all of that. Oh boy, there's a whole bunch of things we still have to finalize. But anyway, um, you can still find us over on the social media stuff. They exist. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if we're happy about that. Probably eh. not. We're kind of tepid on it, but uh, if you are interested, you can find me at Citanium. You can find me at EXP Limited, and you can sh- find the show currently at Delve Podcast. That's that's probably going to be changing also. Yeah, th- th- there's there's probably going to be a new account, but we'll tell you about that. Uh, on another episode. Uh, so many, so many changes. So many changes. Um, but, you know, I do have to say that considering that we have essentially uh, been doing this for about 300 episodes, if we actually count specials and um, live episodes and all of that, um, that's a pretty good run for a series in general. 
like, if you think about it, how many shows do you know that have 300 episodes? Um, cartoons, Friends, TV <laughs> shows that people, uh, some long-running <laughs> animes. Even Friends didn't have 300 episodes. Friends had over 200. But... Did it? I don't know. Um, Star Trek? YouTube channels. Oh, YouTube channels. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube channels do definitely have more than uh, 200 episodes. Uh, um, oh, uh, oh, soap operas. Yeah, but those are like 500 episodes that are only a variation of three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, it's a mix and match combination of stuff. But to be fair, if, you, if you've had that many episodes where they're like in the 500, 600 range... There, there's only so many variants you can do before you just start mixing and mashing. Oh, Supernatural. Oh, Supernatural, that's right. That was on for like 15 seasons or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just a variation of the same five episodes. <laughs> Someone is going to get upset with you for that. <laughs> I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. Maybe it's 10 episodes. I don't know. I don't I, watch Supernatural. Don't Supernatural fans get at me in the yeah, comments. Su yeah, Supernatural stands. <laughs> get into, get him in the comments. <laughs> I didn't watch Supernatural either, so sorry. I watched like three episodes, I think, and they were piecemeal. You watched all of their content. I watched all of their content. I watched three episodes. <laughs> Good one. Um... Thank you for listening to this episode, everybody. This is where the episode ends, definitively. Have a good day. Bye. See ya.